But what I'm going to do in the short time that we've got left is just bring together all the calculus that we've been dealing with today. At the beginning, I, I went over some of the rules for derivatives, and so that's what I'm going to look at. The questions, again, I've got in front of me are some taken out of the exemplar paper and then one that I've just made up the top of my head. All right, so the question in the exemplar paper is find the derivative of f of x is equal to minus 5x squared plus 2x. Now, remember what I cautioned you against? is make sure that everything, there's no square roots, there's no denominators. Well, for me, this one looks nice and user-friendly, so I'm actually going to go straight into the derivative. Notice that the function is given in the form f of x, and so I am therefore going to give the examiner my solution or my answer as f dash x, the derivative of f at x. And, of course, my laws tell me I must bring down the 2, all right? and I must reduce by 1. And of course, when I do that here, notice what I'm doing is bringing down the 1, so it's 2 times 1, and then reducing my power, which was originally a 1, makes it a 0. And of course, you don't have to do this step. I'm just being really, really, really cautious to assist those of you who are still battling. Minus 5 times 2 is minus 10. x to the power of 1 is just x. And of course, 2 times 1 is 2, x to the 0 is 1, and so that would be my final answer. For two marks, wouldn't that be so wonderful if you got something quite as simple as that? Right, the second one out of the exemplar paper, which is out of 4. A good indicator that it's a little bit more difficult and that you're going to have to work a little bit harder for those marks. So, remember, this is written as the square root of x cubed, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in exponential form, and the square root is actually something raised to the power of a half. Then, if you remember, my next rule was never, ever, ever have an x in the denominator. So that means that my x cubed is going to come up as x to the negative 3. Please notice that the constant or the number can stay exactly where it is. It's just the x that have to, has to be elevated onto the numerator. Right, so I'm not quite ready yet, so please notice I'm still working with y. So I've got x to the 3 over 2 plus, I'm just tidying up so that when I take the derivative, I'm not going to make silly mistakes. And now I am ready. Now the function is given, me, given to me as y, so that means I'm going to give my answer as the derivative of y with respect to the x variable. Our notation is important. That means that I'm going to take 3 over 2 x. Now I have to reduce this by 1. This is 1 and a half at the moment, so if I reduce that by 1, it's going to be just a half. Now I'm going to have plus the derivative of this function is I'm going to bring down the negative 3. I'm going to reduce the power by 1, which is a minus 4. Minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4. And my denominator is still waiting there in the sidelines. It is over 3. I would obviously want to tidy that up. And so I have got 3 over 2. Now, some candidates might want to make that back to root x. And, of course, this is a plus times a minus. The threes cancel, so that's minus. And, of course, I would prefer to make that 1 over x to the 4. All right, my last comment before I leave you is I did say to you that you must always get things into the y form. So if they asked you to find the derivative of y, please notice that you would have to, first of all, take out a common factor in this particular instance, and then you would have to say y is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 2 over x minus 1. And if you've just been watching, you would know that this factorizes beautifully, 
and of course that would cancel and I would now be able to multiply that out and voila, my derivative would be 2x minus 3. Lovely question for extension. Thank <laughs> you.